Robert Scoble and I'm the startup liaison officer at Rackspace and we're here at the Rackspace uh, studio at TechCrunch Disrupt 2012, right at the front door. We have a huge space here, it's really great. Uh, and we're seeing lots of cool startups going through the uh, startup hall, the startup alley here and uh, pulling up the cool ones, <laughs> or at least the ones I can find that are cool. <laughs> and this is going to be a fun one because uh, there's guns involved. <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> Among eh? other things. Yeah. And we're going to talk about Kickstarter here too, which is really uh, a, a huge trend here. Who are you? Yeah, my name's John Atherton from uh, Hex3. I founded that at the beginning of the year after launching a couple of products on uh, Kickstarter and then uh, getting successful and having to produce them, which uh, it's been quite exciting for the year. Yeah, we just pimped you on uh, uh, Twitter. Your Twitter address is Tunes? Yeah, that's right. I used to do software for uh, music uh, sharing called, ah. called TuneFeed, and that was right when tu uh, Twitter was quite young, and I managed to get the uh, pretty decent that's, handle Tunes, yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So, uh, you're building hardware, which is uh, not typical for uh, Startups, you know, until Kickstarter came along. Kickstarter really yeah, exactly, got yeah. <laughs> uh, a lot of new hardware uh, startups going, like Pebble Watch and stuff like that. Yeah. What What are you What are you doing there? What and and how does? Well, and we're going to see some of the products that you're developing on, on Kickstarter. Yeah. So uh, last year I bought a quadcopter, you know, the Parrot AR drone. Yep. And uh, it was quite expensive, and I thought my. Um, yeah, you it's know, like three hundred, four hundred dollars. That's right. So. Um, and I was playing with it with the kids. I got three kids, and they were all arguing over it. And I thought it would be kind of cool if there was a um, an app that you could uh, have color recognition and shoot the thing, and it would move around. And then I decided that uh, what the world needed was a gun that you could put your iPhone in the back of. So I guess my kids are uh, a little bit spoiled. I went out and made them some hardware. <laughs> yeah. No, that's cool. Yeah. So what what do these guns do? So I can can I shoot Rocky with this gun? Well, if you, yeah, <laughs> you can give it a go. Or more accurately, he wants to shoot me. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So um, basically, you put your uh, iPhone or any smartphone into the back. Uh, the clamp on the back is pretty easy to fit your device into. It takes Android, iPhone. Um, we're working on some uh, Windows stuff at the moment, and then just clamp it in, yep. and you're good to go. Um, there's no wires or anything because we use a little bit of secret source to communicate between the gun and the um, and the app. And okay. uh, the other thing you can do with this is uh, detach the um, the top part from the bottom, just, just like we've got here. The uh, and then you can put this top part onto a Nerf gun or a real weapon if you like, or airsoft or paintball or pretty much anything you want. All right. So what, when I use this, what what does it do? Okay. So that's the. Uh, so the if I want to shoot Rocky over there, what, what? Yeah. Well, at the front here we've got um, a lens which. Uh, it, it, yeah. Yeah. So that. Uh, uh, out the front of that, you've got an encoded infrared beam, much like a TV remote control. Yep. And there's 65,535 different codes that you have in the uh, in the gun. The fact when it leaves the factory, it'll have its own code. You can up, you can change it at any time later on. Uh, when I shoot, if you've got one, when I shoot you, yep. uh, the sensor on the top here will pick up the uh, the encoded beam and determine which player it was. And then in the cloud, we work out all the scores and so forth. Wow. Yeah. Do I have to wear a target? Or? No, it's all done through the sensors on the top here. There's three sensors in there. And, but, uh, so how does it know that I'm shooting you or shooting Rocky? Well, that's the thing. We've got, um, with the beam size, uh, at about 150 meters, it's about six meters in diameter. Uh, so it, you've got, it's a game, right? So it's not exactly like you're gonna get a headshot or anything, but yeah. it does work. So the, uh, the beam sort of covers a person at about, 10 meters, it'll be about two meters in diameter. So I can so, shoot Rocky. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so it's, um, we've got indoor, outdoor mode. The, the really cool thing about this though is that we've got an SDK, so developers can build whatever they want with it. And uh, so we expose the reload lever, the four buttons on the top here, and the trigger. And wow. so you can pretty much build whatever apps you want. And this isn't yet shipping, is it? It's, it's coming out soon? Yeah, it's very soon. We're, um, we've had to uh, iterate several times. Uh, iteration in hardware takes a little bit longer yeah. than it does in software. And uh, I think we've got a really quality product now. You can see the texture and so on on there. It's um, much nicer than the average toy, and that's really what we're it's trying to do. It's about six weeks away from shipping Yeah, five right to now. six weeks, yeah, yeah. that's right. This yeah. is a problem with Kickstarter, though. A lot of people are starting hardware companies, and they, they haven't done a hardware company before. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, when I interviewed the CEO of GoPro, he told me about how he started making a little <coughs> camera and, and, and getting uh, guys in China to build the prototypes and how long it took and how it didn't feel right at first, you know, and now yeah. now he has a really sweet product. Yeah, that's right. But 
It takes a while and it's expensive. Right? It is. Um, the, uh, the funds that we raised off Kickstarter were really more of a product validation than anything else. I've put an awful lot of money of, of my own into this to uh, develop it. Um, I mean, just the tooling for a product like this, there's 38 different parts in it. Might not look like it, but there are. Yeah. And uh, the tooling for that's close to $100,000, so um, with all the textures and so forth in it. Yeah. And that takes maybe five or six weeks to make the tools. And then if you've got any modifications to them, it takes another week. 10 days and they yep. just sort of roll over. And then there's long lead time parts you've got to worry about. And then of course all of the little tiny things that can go wrong when you're making something. With software it's always been, for me, a lot easier just to sort of get the developers to change something and you can have something to test later on that afternoon. But with this sitting by and just throwing more money at it until it comes out the other end. But I think we've got a really good product now and I'm very happy with how it's looking. Yeah. Yeah. And plus over the top of that, I've developed a whole lot of apps to go with it. So there's another layer again. And so on the iPhone, what will I see on the iPhone? Will well, I see a little target? Or well, what? it's basically like a first person shooter. Okay. So you got your, uh, your gun down in the bottom corner. When you pull the trigger, you see laser beams on the screen. Um, they hit the target, there's um, explosions or whatever. Um, you've got health kits and power-ups and uh, ammo packs that you can pick up and armor. And so it's virtually like playing uh, Halo, but you're doing it in real life, in the office, outdoors, kids in the backyard, basically gets them off the couch and, and playing. And how much are uh, two or three of these going to cost? Well, these are $59, which I think is an absolute bargain. Yeah, um, well, particularly after you spent 100 grand developing yeah, it, right? Yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> my, my kids are getting, what, i got three kids, it's $33,000 a piece. <laughs> Yeah. So um, when they fit onto the Nerf guns, you, we've got a little uh, cord you can see here that goes down onto the uh, onto the trigger of the Nerf gun. Yep. So we're thinking that developers can come up with apps that'll do stuff with Nerf guns and maybe video the, the darts flying out, capture uh, you know the best shot of the day and all that sort of thing. So there's um, that's going to be awesome. Yeah, a lot of things you can do. And all, you know with. Um, uh, games that are out there already, first person shooter games, um, you can basically use this as a, a controller as well. So, yeah, some pretty neat things. Wow, and are you recording the video of what the reactions are or what? It, what yeah, you know, we, so we can go we, watch it later and <coughs> how I killed Brocky and shot him in the head. You know? we, we haven't got quite to that level yet because we're, um, we're st still building it. He's not it too happy out. over behind my TriCaster. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So basically, there's a couple of different modes that I haven't really spoken about. We've got single player mode, which we've got a, a marker, which is much like this one. Yeah. And um, that'll. Uh, Did we have a video or a demo yeah, of what think, it looks like? Yeah. Then we got, then, so then we got the multiplayer game, which I mentioned before. Yeah, Rocky, yeah. can you run the multiplayer one? Now that, yeah. The cool thing with this is you can have up to 65,000 players in it. There's a little bit of uh, muzzle flash going on. Um, I'm not sure if you'll be able to pick it up yep, in here. I, yeah, I can so see it. So you can see it out the front, but it also makes the whole front of the gun illuminate as well. So it's like, you know, really sort of laser. Awesome. Laser gun, yeah. <laughs> Is there a little t targeting so you see the red die? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I actually, better duck. <laughs> actually, if I pull that right up to you, you can, uh, hang on. There. Yeah, you might not be able to see. Yeah. It's good bright in here, these lights, but you do get two little dots on the on the target that you're shooting at as so, well. So you're, you yeah. know you're about to get shot. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> now, now if Rocky shoots me, does something show up on my iPhone? Or? Yeah, you get uh, bullet holes across the screen at the moment. That's oh, right. cool. Yeah. And, and the other thing is we use haptic feedback in the phone so the gun vibrates as well. Ah. The really cool thing with this is that you know we've got a fairly inexpensive toy and we're using a mega brain on the top. You know, um, 
it wasn't possible a few years ago to be able to do the video processing. So now we've got computing power you used to have on your desktop 10 years ago in a toy. Yeah. And you can do that for $59, which is pretty good. Does this work with iPod Touches? So yeah, if iPod you don't touch have an iPhone? Because a lot of kids have the iPod Touch. Yeah. Absolutely, iPod Touch just here with the camera. As long as it's got a camera, it'll work. You don't need Wi-Fi or anything? Uh, Wi-Fi or, um, or 3G, yeah. For, but but not, do you need Wi-Fi to, to uh, use for the, it? For the multiplayer, the yeah. Multiplayer. Yeah, we're working on doing some Bluetooth stuff as well. But okay. um, the uh, And that leads me onto the secret source that we have that communicates with between the gun and the and the, uh, and the app, we're using high frequency sound, which is encoded. So when you pull the trigger, we've got a high frequency sound that comes out and a whole bunch of stuff. We've got pending patents on that's, that sort of stuff. That's yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Um, and so when you're pulling the trigger, it's sending a little high frequency sound to the microphone on the? On, on, on the, the device. Microphone. So basically if it's got a microphone, it'll work. Um, Android phones, anything. And the really cool thing is that there's no syncing or pairing or battery con consumption like you get out of a Bluetooth device. It also makes the device, you know, our gun cheaper. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, it just How works. How did you figure that out? Oh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, basically, um, I, can't, I went through a few different ways that you can um, communicate. And the first idea was a mechanical sort of tapper on the screen, and I dismissed that pretty quickly, thinking it was going to be pretty cheap and break too yeah. easily. And then I thought about um, a headphone socket, much like Square does. And then um, I looked up uh, damage to headphone socket on Google and it came up with like 75 million responses because uh, people drop or bang their headphone socket and it breaks the whole screen. So there's a big um, returns issue there basically. Yeah. If, you know, if you're gonna break someone's phone, it's gonna be bad for you. And I thought since we use, you know, I'd gone through the thought of using sound, um, I thought, well, we could use sound above human hearing. Yeah. We, had, we were here at uh, the uh, hackathon the other day just showing it to some developers, yep. and uh, everybody was just all over it. They oh, it I, awesome. I think yeah. it's a brilliant product, and congrats on you figuring out how to make it work. Yeah, so, thanks, yeah. It's really cool. So, how many patents do you have on this? Uh, there's one, but it's uh, all encompassing a whole bunch of different things that we've sort of developed over the, over the course of uh, building it out. Yeah. Very cool. That's not the only product you do, though, right? You no. have these new uh, styluses. That's right, yeah. I was foolhardy enough to put two products up on Kickstarter fairly close together and then have to build them out during the last year. They haven't really slowed each other down, but it's meant that my workload has been astronomical. Yeah. Uh, because um, it might appear at first that a stylus is a relatively simple thing, but there's a lot of stuff going on in here. And since we use the high frequency sound to communicate with the app in this as well, is that sort of level of difficulty. But then you've got the, um, how, do, how do you do the uh, pressure sensitivity and how do you um, get the conductivity between the screen and your fingers and all sorts of stuff like that. And just minor variations in um, materials cause a, a big problem or a, and we're, it's taken a long time to get the material just right. So, so this cool. is a pressure sensitive stylus. Yeah, absolutely. On an iPad. Yeah, so it allows you to do, uh, and this is a simple, this is the pairing mechanism. You turn it on. Yep. That is brilliant. And for people who can't see, let me see if I can get that on the camera. It, it actually lets you do thicknesses and yeah, it's pressure so, sensitive. So if you like, yeah, have a go. Just hold on to the, uh, the black part there. Give it a bit of a press down. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's nice. It's pretty fluid, isn't it? Yeah, for Photoshop or for, for yeah. photo editing? Uh, actually, or? this is um, uh, Autodesk, uh, what is it, uh, Paint Shop Pro? Uh, yep, Paint Shop something. Paint Shop Pro. There's all sorts of apps. There's Sketchbook. There's, a, there's all sorts of, yeah. there's Sorry, all sorts of sketching on apps. On this yeah. is brilliant. So this is Sketchbook Pro. Um, we're also integrated with uh, Procreate, um, Sketch Club, uh, PDF Pen. We've got some, I was down visiting a few people near here the other day and uh, they're integrating as well. So that's really big news, but I can't really go. And when is this coming out? This is about a week and a half to two weeks. They're, we're taking pre-orders on our website at judgeourstylist.com at the moment. Cool, and how much are these gonna cost? These, these are $89. 89 Yeah, so. I mean, in the theme of the Disrupt Conference, I think it's um, uh, in the past, uh, creative professionals have used pressure sensitive styluses like the Wacom yep. and the Cintiq and so forth. Now they're uh, very expensive. So cumulatively, you'd be looking at $1,000 to $2,000 for that product. And you're pretty much chained to your desk and that's plugged into your desktop machine. Um, now people can grab this 
and draw directly onto a screen and for $89 you've got something that expands your iPad into a really good artistic That's tool. really, really brilliant. Uh, you know, um, how long did it take you to figure that one out? Uh, it, well, this one we, we started on in uh, December last year and uh, the, the pressure sensing was kind of difficult but the conductivity was even more difficult. Just as an example, the, the tip here, these are replaceable so we can, um, you can uh, we can have different tips eventually, and we're planning to do so. Now that, that pin there is uh, 0.7 of a mil in diameter, which means you can put it into a mechanical pencil as well. So you know a push button pencil? Yep. So if you've got a really nice one that your wife gave you or whatever, you can use that as your stylus. It's a dumb stylus, not pressure sensitive, but still nice to draw with, right? But that pin, if you vary the material content, and that's hardened steel, if you put a little bit of uh, chrome plating or vanadium or make it stainless, the whole thing fails to work, yep. right? And our vendors that make the pins decided they were going to do us a favour and make it more rust proof, right? And not tell us. So we're sort of drawing with these things going, they're not working. And it just took us quite a long time to work out exactly what had occurred. But uh, now we've got it all fully debugged and it's working, working really well. So, and you get a whole work, a whole work week's worth of work <laughs> out of uh, one AAA uh, uh, battery. So, so there's a AAA battery AAA in AAA battery, and the great thing is that you don't have to wait for it to recharge. $89, huh? Oops. So I'm going to buy one right now. Yeah. I think that's awesome. Yeah. I, and these come out in six weeks, $59 each? 59 yeah, these are 89 Three of them, yeah. of course, so that's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, Kickstarter just was fantastic for this yeah. pro whole process. We um, uh, came up with a product thought we had a good idea, everybody said, wow, that's cool, but once you get it on the Kickstarter, you find out that it, if it is really cool or not. And then once you've done that, you can uh, exert the rest of the money or you know, your, uh, your funding into putting the, uh, the actual product together. It's, it's brilliant and it's yeah. really, uh, the world is changing because of it. And Absolutely, Congrats yeah. to Kickstarter, yeah. congrats to you. Yeah. Where do I learn more about these products? Well, we've got hex3.co or- Hex3, so H-E-X. An, the number, number three, three dot co. Dot co. Yep, that's right. Okay. No, no M on dot the com, end. That's dot, right. Dot co. And uh, you can also go to jarjarstylus.com or laserblaster.com if you find that easier to remember. Very cool. Thank you so much for coming Thanks out. Thanks very much, mate. And congrats on getting these things done. It's really awesome. Save you trouble of going to buy one, mate. There oh, you go. Thank you so much. This yeah. is awesome. Yeah. And so do I have to load any special software on there? Yeah, if you get Sketchbook Pro on there and Procreate or whatever, you okay. can give it a go straight out of the box. Yeah. Yay. All right. Thanks, well, thank mate. you so much. Yeah. So we're going to continue seeing uh, companies like this all day long. We have a couple more coming up in a few minutes. Um, this is uh, Robert Scoble from the Rackspace Studio at TechCrunch Disrupt 2012, and we'll be back in a few minutes. Cool. Thank you. Thank you.